we sit in the midst of Dick Gregory. One more time, let's put our hands together and thank you very much, Dick, for accepting this invitation and for being with us. Thank you, Dick. Thank you. Let me say first, we thank and praise God that you made it here safely and you will make it back safely. When you have to wonder if you're going to get back safely, then you really don't know the real God. That one that saw you when you was born, would make, he's not going to see you go to a, a black nationalist movement. Huh? You can't hear? You can't? Okay, I'm sorry. So thank you. Bless you. Any of you all in here that know what's fixing to happen to the sun in the next? If anybody in here that know what's about to happen to the sun? What'd you say? Stand up so they can hear you. The sun is hitting major solar flares that's going to disrupt everything. Disrupt everything? Everything. everything. Mm -hmm. And it might not put it back together. But if y'all listen to white boys talk about it, you think it's something he ordered. <laughs> or she ordered. And so let me say to those of you that's here, thank you for taking care of this brother and his wife. I'll get these documents to you. We got hold of some documents where the government had to admit they've been watching the King family for 80 years. That was before Martin. Before his father. And before his grandfather. Hmm? And when you understand what they're doing there, you understand what they're doing here. Right. Somewhere, when I was in Atlanta, whew, what a blessing. See, anytime you go anywhere and see this group, especially them original criminals, they keep trying. You see, it's some people they can't kill. Huh? See, y'all been so, what, what you call it, home going? Let me tell you, if you got a white insurance company, you better put dead. Well, them white folks don't know nothing about no home going. They don't pay for home going. <laughs> Somewhere. In Atlanta, did they film that? Yeah, they did. We need to bring that here and just listen to what they feel about this brother. And when you hear what they feel about him, then you know how they feel about you. Hmm? Hmm? That's very important. And so I would just like to say, I have never participated in nothing in my life like what they put on for this brother here. Hmm? Nobody left. Six o'clock, one o'clock, we still there. And nobody got tired. In Atlanta, in Atlanta, we ain't never done nothing but trick folks. They had a black police chief in Atlanta, a black mayor, white cops went in the wrong house and killed a 92-year-old black woman, went down the street and roughed up one of them drug pushes and said, we need you to say, we really effed up. We went in the wrong house and killed a woman. And we want you to say she sold you drugs. <laughs> See how it works? And he did. 93-year-old woman fixing to die disgrace. Live with grace and not fixing to die with disgrace. Had it not been for her daughter and a black minister. Hmm? You hear me? 
The sister carried the brother to the church and sit down and say, you know my mother didn't do that. Everybody know didn't do that except the man, the police chief. And he started crying and he said, let me tell you what they did. And they held a press conference. Not because of the elected officials. Not because of that. Because a brother in the street came to see him, the woman's daughter and the preacher, with no hatred. And that's how she got out. I haven't heard nobody apologizing to her. But why you need to be apologized to by thugs in holes and pimps? I don't understand that you all can be as hip as you are and still talk about this crazy white boy. He's been crazy all his life. If this is a white man here, and this is my mother here, and he knock her up, what kind of man is it that don't even look twice at half of his child? Hmm? Just put them all out there. Hmm? So why are y'all upset? Hmm? Why are you upset? If you haven't seen this book, let him show you the book later. Okay. Where Harry Truman signed a treaty with the space people that he can use this planet as experiments. Any of y'all in here knew about that? Yeah. Yeah. This is what y'all living with. Yeah. You think all this drug stuff just happened? Huh? The whole thing is, it's not happening to us now. never stopped. But the number one drug state in America is Vermont. Hmm? Yes, 99.9% .9 white folks. Hmm? But when you doing it, everybody know it. They doing it, and most of y'all ain't never heard of it. And they do it different, they don't hide. They make stuff that would make marijuana look like Kool-Aid. <laughs> they don't hide, and there's a reason that we hide to do our dirt, but they don't hide to do their dirt. Huh? And there's a not legitimate reason. Huh? What's the reason? Our problem, I don't care who you are, if you sit in this room every day, we all got the same problem. We the only group of people in the history of the planet that was misused the way we was misused, huh? And we took education over liberation. Huh? You think George Washington thugs was beating up the British so they could build a college? Huh? So you substituted that. That's why we have to talk about your degrees. That don't mean nothing if you're not liberated. That's right. Huh? That's right. What does them thugs say? Give me liberty or give me what? Death. 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 Black folks was in the cotton field singing. And before I be a slave, I be buried in my land. That nigga been singing that song for 20 years, picking cotton. <laughs> and you don't feel bad about it. But you're not liberated. Would I come up here? Who was talking about the woman that got raped? I heard part of that. Ah, huh? uh, yeah. Uh, to to yeah. And a whole lot of others. Yeah, yeah. Hmm? You'll tolerate that if you're not liberated. Yeah. A white boy liberated send you all the way around the world to kill people like you and don't even tell your ass things. Hmm? Mm -hmm. And you don't feel bad about it. That's right. Buffalo soldiers riding around. The big hassle, Bob Marley wanted me to be his opening act at Harvard University. He said, I'll pay you $60,000 and I don't want to work with you. Mm. One of the nicest, kindest spirits on this planet. I found out how kind he was because he'd make more in one month back then than I'd make in six months. He got on a plane and flew to Boston to ask me why, not with an attitude. 
I said, because you had nerve enough to glorify the Buffalo soldiers when these crackers sent them west to kill out the Buffalo That's to right. starve the Indian That's to right. death. That's hmm? right. That's right. Hmm? Bob, he said, but I didn't know it. I said, my mother don't know it, but she ain't a genius like you. If many of y'all's children here starved to death or got shot by a driver, it all, it's always happened. Let Rockefeller's son get shot. And drive-bys will stop overnight. As long as they was just killing us, it was okay. When they made a mistake and killed that rich white woman, then they changed it from car theft. Hmm? The homicide. And so it's just nice you have some place you can come to. And don't have to be hiding. I know some of y'all hide when you leave here. But as long as he's not hiding. And his wife and family is not hiding. And then don't take this stuff personal. Don't take this stuff personal. Here's a white boy that a white woman didn't get the right to vote to 1920. She came over on the boat with the boy. That's his mama, his daughter, his girlfriend. So if he treat her that way, what do you expect? Hmm? And the only reason she got the right to vote now, she took it. She came out here and act a fool. So when y'all stop acting peaceful and nice, Hmm? Hmm? That's what scared her down with King. And I don't know if King even knew what he was saying. But that white boy figured it out and said, something's here more than. See the niggas singing before I be a slave, they still picking cotton singing that same song. And then we find out that they've been Following King with army and intelligence for 80 years. His grandfather, his father, him, his children, 80 years. When he went to college, they sent agents to college with him. Hmm? And that's not King. They would do all y'all like that if you created a threat. You ain't no threat. Marcus Garvey created a threat. huh? But he was different because they knew they couldn't kill him and get away with it. Hmm. They knew that. <laughs> Got a black sister out of this town. <laughs> Queen Mother Moore. <laughs> when you get to the real truth, that hurts you. Huh? She's a street hoe. And Hoover came and got her. He said, here's what we need. They put him in jail and they knew they couldn't kill him. Because they was dealing with a street hoe, he wasn't dealing with hoes and pimps. So they put him in jail. Then they wouldn't make a deal. We ain't gonna let you go, but you know we can't kill you. So we gonna let you out. But you got to leave here. Hmm? Got to go back to Jamaica. Hmm? And he said, well, okay, but let me speak to my people one more time. And they set that up in New Orleans. Brought him in on a barge. And people came from all over the country. Huh? All over the country. And when he got through, they had brought a collection for him. $3.5 million in nickels, dimes, and quarters. Hmm? Hear me? That's what that was about. Yeah. And so when I think about the black woman, brother, if you ever find out who she is, and if she ever find out who she is, she's not going to tolerate your game. Because you ain't even got the real game. Mm -hmm. <laughs> A black woman in America is the only woman on the planet can take a butter knife and cut your ties to the rim. <laughs> she ain't got no bazooka. 
she ain't got no bolo life. And she don't raise no hell. All she asks is, who is Melba? <laughs> and she went on there and drew, drew your bath water. Hmm? Aren't you sure? She hear you all on the phone talking to your man. Oh, uh, I'll meet you there, me and Melba. <laughs> he go downstairs. All four times. You can see the rim. Now remember, those aren't just rims, them are rims who white businessmen guarantee them for 20, 30 years. That guarantee don't mean nothing to the system. Hmm? Nothing to the system. And one day, hmm? I remember, it was a long time before I realized that you cannot rape your wife. I didn't know that. And any of y'all sitting here messed up with that, you, you ought to try to find you another group. So at least you can live the way your head's been programmed. So I apologize to my wife. You know how you all are, you act like nothing ever happened. And I said, well, she said, what do you think I ought to do? You ought to call the police. She said, what, what? For what? You raping me? If I called him, it'd be a non-threatening misdemeanor. That's awful when your lady tell you that's how small you are. <laughs> and say it would be handled in small claims court. <laughs> and while white boys telling y'all to mess with these children, they got their pants hanging down below their butt. Hmm? But you older folks here, 15 years ago, when the white children would go to a football game on Saturday and during halftime get naked and run across, and they call it streaking, <laughs> and you worrying about something that's not even illegal because when you get down to what he's about, that's a different story. And I don't know how you brothers out here and sisters in the movement, y'all stay together, man. Good thing you love her, because you'd be hell if you didn't. And this brother here, something there. See, I've been married 55 years, but I'm not home most of the time. They're home. Hmm? And these white folks do whatever they want to do. Not to me. I always meet the one nigga that they wouldn't do it to. Like I always meet the one white person that ain't a racist. Huh? Just thank you, my brother. How many of y'all knew Malcolm X personally? Anybody? Did you know what changed his whole mindset? Was, it, was an African brother in Nairobi named Depinto? He's the one that changed Malcolm headset. And the Sunday right here, when they assassinated Malcolm, the same hour they were assassinating the Pinto. Now you see how big this thing is? Hmm? They don't care nothing about you. It's what you have the power to do if you ever wake up. Hmm? Y'all need to throw a fake meeting and sit here six hours and don't say nothing. <laughs> that would run white folk crazy. <laughs> Y'all was here the night, the week of September 11, wasn't you? Come here. When them firemen and them police ran in here and they could feel something and turn right back around and went away. Made like it wasn't no crowd. 
And you better do it quick because there's some young folk coming up behind you don't give a damn about you. And all that old stuff, I feed you, they can live without food. And one day, y'all ought to have these people here and, and get deeply into this new set of children that hit this planet. Called the indigo children. Huh? You looking for education over liberation? Indigo children are born with IQs 200 and go up. They in your house with you. You put them on all kind of pills because you think they're crazy. No, you crazy that you can tolerate this and don't even look crazy. Hmm? And every night while you think they sleep, they traveling to other. Hmm? You hear me? Other galaxies. Huh? And y'all run this game down on them. You're going to do this. You're going to do this. And they sitting there talking to their partners when they leave here. What's wrong with that fool called my mama? <laughs> you yell and scream at them. An uh, African ain't hey, never hit a child. Come on, you beat them, but you won't go on the street and beat one of them dope pushers down who came out your belly. That should insult you. Huh? You sitting there talking about, I, I don't use no, no mouthful of snuff. What do you think snuff is? Hmm? I can take you out of here tonight and get you a, a drug 3,000 times more powerful than crack, cocaine, and heroin, and I can get that safe way of job. You cook with it all the time. Nothing ain't. That's a drug, 3,000 times more powerful than crack, cocaine, and heroin put together. So your discipline go as far as your ignorance go. And then it stops. Hmm? And them young children laughing at you, they just can't do it in front of you, they have to go call their friends. Tavon, what did they say, he went to the store and bought what? Come on. And what else? Have you ever, as long as you've been alive, listened to them talk about a homicide and talk about more what they bought than what happened to the killing? Hmm? Any of y'all in this room know that Skittles and iced tea put together will give you a high, sometimes they have to take you to the hospital, and your children at home drinking, and you just think they have it? Hmm? There's a spirit inside of you where you should say, wait a minute, why are they telling me about Skittles? Hmm? What's this about? And then you start seeing how big it is. Zimmerman. Hmm? Y'all all heard of Zimmerman, right? Yeah. How many of y'all, how many did New York Times tell you he lived in an all-Negro neighborhood? Hmm? And everybody we interviewed said he ain't no way like a racist. Well, if he's not a racist, and he don't live there, why don't he tell us? Because he's under the influence of whatever the government put on you. Hmm? You older folks, especially you older men, I don't think y'all used it. And I mean, I'm not saying it's being facetious. I always heard it in the white neighborhoods and stuff called Spanish fly. Huh? If you haven't heard of it, look it up. You can take Spanish fly and go to a Catholic church where nuns live and put their name while all of them will get naked and turn into a hoe. <laughs> now let me tell you this. I just want to establish that they got something out here. They can make you smell it. Hmm? You smell grandma cooking and get hungry. So don't tell me they haven't taken this multi-trillion dollar crap they got and perfected it because they're scared of you. Hmm? They don't know how you can do this. Hmm? I kidnap you, beat you, rape you, cut the baby out your belly. Hmm? And then after I let you go, after ain't no white folks that many been killed as in the Civil War, brothers and sisters fighting brothers and sisters over us. Hmm? You hear me? Yeah. Of us. 
that they told you about. John Brown. My birthday is October the 12th. Every October the 12th, I go to Harper's Ferry. Touch John Brown's spirit. Every October the 16th, I go back. And every December the 2nd, I go to Charleston, West Virginia. That's where they hanged him. Huh. And you all are missing a treat if you don't know who he is. Give them all to me in any line you want. John Brown going to be number one. Hmm? Why? Because he did something I wouldn't do. He took two of his sons with him. Huh? I'll go. Let me tell you. No, no, look. I'll come and die for y'all in the ghetto. Nah, I ain't going to live in no ghetto. <laughs> but call me. I'll come back. I don't mind dying there. But I'm not living there. And ain't nothing y'all can do about it. Say, so why that street got dirt on it? When you understand a person with education and no liberation, you throw shit on the ground. If I looked at you and saw you bleeding now with my limited stuff in, 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 in medicine, I think you're getting ready to have a stroke. I said, don't, don't let her bleed. Hmm? That's part of having a stroke. Sitting in the hot summertime of room 110, it's normal for you to sweat. So I can look at you and tell what I'm looking at. And no, I don't qualify to deal with you. Black folks think y'all can. Well, let, let me talk to Bill. My oldest son, well educated, he's probably one of the smartest children in my house. Called me one day from Dallas. Dad, you got to come to Dallas and help me out. I'm drunk, I'm cracked out. I said, I can't help you. I ain't never smoked crack. <laughs> so y'all be bullshitting with him. You think you can help? What you know about it? He keeps the stuff under your pillow. Well, Dad, you go all over the world helping people. I said, boy, if the doctor told you you had a brain tumor, would you call me to come and cut that tumor out your head? Hell no. Then don't call me about no cracking shit. I don't know nothing about it. Hmm? I don't know nothing about it. Except all addictions is built into want to have fun to hide something down here. Hmm. Hmm. All addictions. And the number one addiction is gambling. Hmm. Gambling. And any of y'all ever been addicted to gambling or know someone that was, there's no debate about that. Hmm. You steal everything from the house. Your mama getting ready to go to the hospital and have an operation, you take her money. Because gambling is something like if I can just get one more shot, I can get over it. I had a friend of mine, Adam Boothwater, Catholic priest, told him 80 years ago, if someone take a gun and wipe out your whole house, don't go get a gun and get even. Just pray to God they can become addicted to gambling. It's a game. The way you talk, huh? One day you realize when that universal God sent you here, the way that God had you talking, that's the way you're supposed to be. That's why you can go out in the woods and tell the difference in a tiger, in a lion, or an elephant. I should be able to tell that difference with you, but y'all got so corrupted in the learning, the slave masters. And then when they tell you y'all talk bad, you don't even defend it. Well, boss, I, I, I talk bad because I learned my English from that bad English-speaking white boy. Yeah, he told it. Go, go, go over there, boss. Go over y'all and get that bell cotton and bring it over y'all. I sound just like him. Hmm? I wasn't meant to sound like some thugs at Harvard or Yale. This is, and when you learn it, because you unlearned it now, I can hear you way away. Hmm? That's why they had to change the way you talked. 
Because you might get back to the real thing. Yeah. I have to change this. Huh? Right. If you talk the way God meant for you to talk, wouldn't no cop mess with you? You don't have to be bad. Huh? That's the way you look at him. Are you talking to me? <laughs> Let me check it. Oh, no, no. I'm looking for Edward. Your name? No. <laughs> All them children in Chicago? That's your fault. What kind of fool is you? Huh? How come they doing it there and no other place where black folks live? That's why you knew it was white folks burning them houses down every October the 30th, the night for Halloween. Because they got a law. If the house is empty and nobody lives in it, you pay tax. But if the house is not there, you don't have to pay tax on the land. So them white folks were sending niggas out there the day before Halloween to burn them down. And y'all don't feel nothing. Oh, mama cooked a good barbecue. Who cares? You ever seen somebody get out of a hospital with cancer and come by your house and get some barbecue? Somewhere. And you don't have to worry about nobody tricking you when you get back into that tone that you had, that you was born with. Hmm? You need to go to a white maternity ward and a black one, and you hear the tones. Hmm? You hear the tones. But no, you embarrassed about. I got a cousin in St. Louis, and now he stayed a nigga. He 102. I went in to check him out for Fourth of July. I found him out there on the lakefront, drugged out. Reefer dust on his nose, cocaine dust on his shirt. Drinking cheap wine, flies flying in and out of his mouth. <laughs> I woke him up and gave him an apple. He said, is it organic? <laughs> Who got their glasses on? Anybody? Just hold this here. Just read, read, read it. Monday, November the 4th, 1996. November the 4th, 1996. What, what college is that? UCLA. And what are they talking about? Sued over its Willard Body Program. Go ahead. Medical Center, families claim university disposed of cavities in an undignified manner. Now that don't sound like you're talking about stealing your goddamn organs. <laughs> That's what they had to go to court. That's a court document. Okay? And y'all just sitting around talking all that bullshit and wonder what's happened to the children. Hmm? I'm sure Cheney got one of them organs. <laughs> you notice you used to listen to the radio, the news, and they'd always be asking about sign up for your organ. You don't hear that no more. And the other thing they didn't tell you is buying organs is like buying a, a good piece of meat if you get it fresh. When you got to stand in line, if I give you an organ of mine and it's older than 24 hours old, that takes 20 years off your life. Hmm? Hmm? So this is what this is about. Huh? I need you. Well, Congress to the probe copter crash of Navy SEAL. Team six, squad that. Did y'all hear that? The US Congress, say it again. Congress to probe copter crash of Navy SEAL. Thank you, thank you brother. That's the six Navy SEALs that killed Bin Laden. All of them were dead. 
been killed since they've been back. Bin Laden was killed December 01. So that means the president was tricking? No, they never let him know what they're doing. The question we should be asking, this country go all over the world and kill folks. And yet some little snotty-nosed children can slip in this country and you can't stop them? Those are organs. Huh? What would stop them if enough people got together and demanded Congress put a law on the books that ever since they've been coming here, you have to trace them and see where they are now? That's a game. Over there in Africa. You say they, they, how many girls they took? 300? Did y'all see them when they finally showed their pictures? They looked like they was here in New York going to a private school. Wasn't no dust on them. Hmm? They little outfit wasn't, they had uniforms. How do y'all look at shit and don't know what you looking at? Huh? How? I'm surprised he go crazy because he see this. He probably ain't got nobody to talk to but his wife and the handful of y'all. <laughs> and this is a nice little crowd here because it's a small room. If they had somebody across the street impersonating Michael Jackson, they'd draw thousands. But you all are too busy to grab somebody when you come. See, if this was my buddy, if you didn't get there three hours early, you wouldn't get in because I'd bring enough people to fill up the house. All by myself. And y'all, I bet if they was giving out diamonds, you'd buy everybody you can find and get big buckets. Diamonds. My daughter asked me, your friend, Michelle, six years old, uh, died. I knew some of you wrong with that girl. That's the way she said, died. <laughs> she over in Japan now. She got there just in time for the typhoon. She got two PhDs and didn't know when that was coming. <laughs> My wife tried to call me the last couple of days, be all sad. I said, what's her insurance policy look like? Read it to me. <laughs> and if y'all black men see bad weather, get with the sister. Hmm? Yeah. I grew up in St. Louis, Missouri. They always had hurricanes. Not hurricanes, tornadoes. Big storms. I run and get with the sister. So one day my mother said, why are you running and get with Mildred? She, she don't go to church. Oh, can't nothing happen to her, mom. She said, what do you mean? I said, well, you lived here all your life. Tornadoes come through every day sometime. You ever heard of a tornado hitting the whole house? <laughs> you ever seen a hoe on TV crying to, I can't find my drawers. <laughs> And that guy ran out of here without paying me. Huh? <laughs> Tornadoes don't mess with no whole houses, and they don't mess with no banks. Huh? So you need to run to a bank or a whole house. When the earthquake hit Haiti, remember? Y'all remember that? The cardinal, I watched that close, because the cardinal was one of the few black cardinals they had. It blew his little home down, killed him. Three miles down the road, it blew the jail down. Murderers, cutthroats. Not one of them died, 90% of them got away. Huh? So I hear something at night, I say, which way is the jail? Which way is the jail? Which way is the jail? So why you can call on God? God gonna show me where the jail is. <laughs> Once you know who you are, to do with this brother and the handful of y'all, it would cost millions. 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 
You do it on chump change. Hmm? And the white boys laying off folks. Hmm? Big time laying off. Stock market went up to seven pounds. Seventeen. No, seventeen. And, 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 and y'all think you can look at the Wall Street Journal, New York Times, and tell about the economy? No. no. Go back to your ghetto stuff. Anytime white folks say, buy one suit and get six free. <laughs> <laughs> and take you some shirts and handkerchiefs on the way out. <laughs> I mean, the economy got so bad with white folks, my little shop living cousin, he had to quit. I'm gonna go in there and buy one suit and get six free, and I'm gonna go in there and steal one and get six years? No, no. <laughs> Somewhere. So when you look and look and look and look, there'd be some funny stuff on the radio if you could see through it. Who was that, that, that white boy? I thought it was black when he had bulletin, bulletin. Uh, a drive-by in L.A., three people killed. And I said, well, I guess the brother had it again. See, I wasn't like my mama. My mama would hear bad, 20 people killed. She said, I hope it wasn't a Negro. Well, who do you hope it was, mom? A Jew? Irish Catholic? With your Christian self, I didn't hear you say, I hope it didn't happen. Huh? You're going to leave it there. Just hope it ain't a black person. Why do y'all feel like y'all got to take responsibility for everything a nigga did wrong? But when you get brothers, sisters like this here, I don't hear y'all talking about them. Hmm? They not only took on America, they took on New York. Hmm? New York. Hmm? And it wouldn't be no America if it wasn't for some black slaves that George Washington owned. Hmm? The army that George Washington them thugs was leading, smallpox got so bad it was killing 2,000 new recruits a week. To the pit, they started running off. They thought something there was happening. They wasn't recruiting. And George Washington remember the slaves he had on the farm when he was a little boy. He had noticed that black woman take a sharp knife and cut the shoulder, and it would bleed. And then she'd put the knife back in the infected blood and then cut your shoulder, and that's how they was inoculating people. And that's what he remembered. And once he did that, the death rate in the military dropped from 2,000 a week to 40 a week, then to none. Black folks, black folks, the cotton gin, hmm? black folks, are you dumb enough to believe that I hate you, but I'm going to invent something to make your burden easy? <laughs> ain't no secret, if more than one person know your secret, ain't no secret. And we got black folks know all white folks' secret, because hmm? we there. Look at him. What did I say? If more than what? One person. One person. That's why I've always known people who masturbate. Don't nobody know it, but their hand and your hand can't talk. <laughs> Yo, y'all be so busy seeing Jesus. And God, which you ain't never saw. But that white racist cop, you see what he do and you let him stay there? Huh? Stay there? White folks bring the drugs in the house and give it to some little black punks that came out your belly and that don't embarrass you? Huh? What would scare him is when mom went out there. And all the neighbors say, he'll kill you, that's my son. And go say, son, uh, you came out of my belly. I'm not tolerating this after you. I can't tell you to stop selling dope. That's the police's job. 
but you my son. I'm not going to kill you. I'm going to stand here beating on this bucket and tell everybody what you're doing on this corner. Mom, don't make me kill you. Now, come on, boy. If that's what you have to do, then do it. I put you here. Miss Jones didn't put you here. I put you here. At least I thought you had enough sense if you're going to sell it, you go out in the white neighborhood and sell it. Not where grandma got to hobble past you on the corner to go get her arthritis medicine. Not where mothers and fathers got to take their children to school. You know they wouldn't tolerate that. And they all buy anything they take. Oh, yeah, the problem in the black community, ain't no black man at home. We ain't home when we home. And y'all think y'all something because you at home? Please. It's funny. When the military tell you they're going to take you, make you a soldier, they never tell you if you get killed that's going to affect the children. They only say that is when I leave on my own. As long as white folks sending me somewhere, the children would be okay because I'm doing something for him. But if I just walked off and left my old lady and them 10 children, they'd be even convinced that the problem with them, I'm not at home. I'm never home now, ain't nothing wrong with them. Hmm? So somewhere, when you stop and think, the only good thing, and white folks know what I'm thinking to you about this town, this brother here, his wife, his family, and all, yeah? him. Okay? I was so happy when I was in Atlanta, I just never seen anything like it in my life. In my life. How old are you now, man? Uh, 68. You said, ah, uh, 68. <laughs> I have a birthday Okay. The reason I say that, I'm 82 and they just told me uh, they have elected me for the Hollywood Walk of Fame. See, if you live long enough, when you made them mad. Right. They said, how that nigga live? We tried to poison him over here. We put a bum on the plane, was on the wrong plane. Hmm? <laughs> nigga don't have no bodyguards. He was listed in the phone book. Hmm? <laughs> when I saw what they did to Jesus, I know bodyguards don't work. Hmm? <laughs> you old folks know that. Jesus was sent here to die for our sins. Y'all know that. I just can't figure out that last word he said. Father, Father, why have you forsaken me? Don't that sound like a nigga trying to get away? <laughs> y'all have the power. The next time y'all go back to Africa, stay there an extra day and, and look at the real stuff. All hurricanes, her, her, her. Start right at the very spot where the slaves was put on the ship. Not in the area. Right there. Stay on the water and follow the same course the slave ship followed. All slaves was let off the ship when they got to the Caribbean. No hurricane. Jump above water till they get to the Caribbean. Get to hit this country and go all the way up this east coast. All the way to Spain. And Spain is as close to Canada as you are to this table. But Canada ain't never had one. Because Canada ain't never messed with a sister like we have. Hmm? Hmm? All y'all got to do is look at white folks and see what happens to them. And you leave sister alone. Booty, booty. Anybody know what booty means? Yeah. What? Huh? And you capture another tribe for me. Yeah, well that's called booty is what the pirates, when they loot a ship, what they take is called the booty. Hmm? And we're the only man on the planet to call our woman, get me some booty. Why? Because it's the spoils of war. You still in war. The spoils, so they're the ones calling it right. Hmm? Somewhere. Somewhere. 
Ray Charles? Oh, y'all love Ray Charles. These little rappers, you don't like them. Why? Didn't Ray Charles say, shake your money maker? Y'all didn't turn it off? All right, y'all turned it up. Shake your money maker. Money maker is a vagina that the universal God gave you, not the Catholic Church, to create another God. And when you sell it, it's referred to as money maker. He always talked about that in his song. Shake your money maker. What kind of fools are y'all? Hmm? What kind of fools are you? Hmm? Somewhere. A black person spit on a child. White folks will make you mad. The priest ripping them off for 200 years, and y'all ain't got mad at them yet. Hmm? Hmm? Ain't got mad at them yet. Hmm? Somewhere. You can turn this around. Hmm? If anything good can come out of what the Supreme Court just finished doing, when they tampered with the voting rights bill, you know the good part about that? We can't blame that on ignorant, nigger hating, redneck, can't read or write crackers. These were some of the best educated men on the planet, some of the most powerful men on the planet. I don't hear y'all discussing that. Because you know they'll hurt your ass. Always want to go up in them snuff dipping ignorant white boy, but these ones with the power, y'all ain't talking about them. Y'all ain't marching on them. Hmm? Somewhere. Somewhere. And then that last one, University of Michigan, that you can no longer use race. No, you can't wait on the leaders. I love the leaders. They doing what they get paid for. Hmm? And I ain't never called the NAACP and the phone was disconnected. Hmm? Hmm? And a whole lot of them black folks died, buried in the river. Hmm? But they want you to think one group's better than the other. Hmm? This one here. Don't trust them. Somewhere, somewhere, if we was liberated, we would go to the state of Michigan, the Supreme Court the same day, and say, I don't know how y'all going to do it, but you better fix this before September, or no black child athlete is going to go to any school in Michigan. You be advised, they will hurry up. University of Texas annual budget for football, just one college, is $100 million that your sons help perpetrate. And you don't even have to do it, just threaten to do it. They can't even take that. Can't even take that. Bad enough playing football, getting your head hit and all that, and go all of that craziness. And then by the time now, see, they find out some good stuff now. They find out now. Stuff they didn't know was happening to the brain 25 years ago. So thank God in the next 20 years, there'll be no more football. Hmm? You know why? Because you can't get insurance. You have insurance. School, though. Hmm? <laughs> It'd be all over. Hmm? All over. So somewhere, when you realize this little flame here, the CIA and the FBI, they ain't nothing but pimp punk. Scared, they represent darkness and filth. You represent light. And if you want to know how powerful light is, over when you go home today, cut all the lights out and get a little match and light it and see if it don't wipe darkness out right next to you. Hmm? Don't need no gun. We are. We are light. They know that about him. See, they know all the stuff they've been trying to do to him. And it don't work. Hmm? It don't work. So somewhere, when you say he ain't selling it, you can learn this from him. Hmm? And all kind of stuff will happen to you. Hmm? All kind of stuff will happen to you. Hmm? Me and my wife, we don't even have no insurance. 
She didn't understand that until that big news thing two years ago. You see that black cemetery in Chicago? That's just a few years ago. Blacks and whites couldn't be buried in the same cemetery. Huh? So my baby son died three weeks old. So we put him in the, oh, she went off on him. Oh, how many limousines are we going to get? How many niggas died? <laughs> how old was it? Two months? We're going to get one limousine. Me and you going to ride in the front. That little box they put in there will be in the back. Hmm? So they can cancel those other 30 limousines. <laughs> that little nigga didn't know 30 people. He ain't seen me that much. <laughs> so two years ago, I'm in Paris. Leo calls me. Greg, Greg, you got to come home. The biggest thing in the news. Y'all heard it. At this cemetery in Chicago was digging people up, throwing them away so they had room for other people. That's where my son was. Mm. Oh, she said, we got to come home. Wait, 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 wait. Now, we live in New England. You don't see no more cemeteries because they go all the way back to the Revolutionary War. I mean, them crackers would be so close to the grave, I'm surprised they're not charging them highway money. You ever see them cemeteries? It's full up all the way as far as you can go. So I said, you think this nigga's the only one throwing back? Have you ever seen a sign at a, field, at a, at a funeral home say, temporary, full? I ain't never seen one say full or temp, but I would kind of like to see a cemetery say temporary full. You see that with a damn parking lot. Hmm? So anyway, somewhere when you all leave here, leave with a joy and a happiness. Being mad at somebody's like you go outside, take the air out your own time. Hmm? That's who you are. God ain't made no feel. They got you believing this woman's beautiful and this one's not. Yeah. This guy's handsome and this is not. Well, tell that to God. Hey, you sure send a piece of junk down here. Hmm? And these white boys in the neighborhood stealing these bodies, they ain't looking for a nice looking one. All hearts look alike. My feet hurt me so bad, I, I, I got mixed emotions about criticizing that because I know I'd get me a pair of feet. That's right. <laughs> and be right up in the line looking for the nigga that took your feet. Man. <laughs> so again, the joy of being around my brother. Hmm. Uh, go, just show it to him. Show it to him. Can y'all see that? Can y'all see that's a skull? Can you see that with a bullet in it? Hmm. Yeah. Hold, hold that one up. Yeah. That one on the ground is the same one. That's Ron Brown. He never was in a plane wreck. Huh? Never was in a plane wreck. Huh? He made the mistake to tell Clinton, when I come back from Bosnia, I'm going before that grand jury, and if you think me and my son going to jail, about that money we brought back in from China for you, he told that thug that? Huh? Popped him, he's the first one at the funeral. Did y'all see him? He's the first one at the funeral. Huh? That's what goes on in this country. Huh? Kennedy, Whew. and they put all that crap together. Thank you, brother. Kennedy gets hit. <laughs> Y'all know they haven't found his brain, don't you? Anybody? Hmm? What kind of blackness are y'all?
Oh, uh, y'all aware that eight years ago they went in the ground and dug up Kennedy's coffin and threw it in the ocean. And every week we send them messages to the to the government where it is. Right, exactly. Follow this here, follow it, go right down there, and you'll find it. Why? What were they hiding? Lee Harvey Oswell? Lee Harvey Oswell? Hmm? He was working at what, the book depository? Do you know that car was not supposed to go down Elm Street until 30 minutes before it made the turn? So if that car wasn't supposed to go down Elm Street, how did he know six weeks ahead of time to get a job at the book deposit on Elm Street? Hmm? Hmm? But y'all can walk in the lab and know about neutrons and protons and all of that. But the stuff that will unlock this, because as long as you living with a lie, it's like walking around with dirty underwear on. Yes, sir. Everybody can smell them but you because you're used to it. <laughs> we all at the party wondering who that is thinking, and you too. <laughs> Somewhere. Somewhere. And I'm just trying to show you who this brother is. Huh? Chicago Tribune. Chicago Tribune. I'm one of the nicest guys on the planet. Listed in the phone book. Okay? Ain't scared of nothing. That's the Chicago Tribune. When Hoover sent out a telex to have the Chicago mob kill me, I got the telex before he did. <laughs> Chicago Tribune. What, what's the date on that when they ran that story? Listen to this now. Friday, March 10th, 1970. Friday, March 10th, 1978. FBI memo, use mob against Dick Gregory by Rob Warden. The that's, that's, that's the game, the game. Thank you, brother. Welcome. Okay. Now, you black folks read the, need to listen to this and then go get you some whiskey or some crack. <laughs> this is scientific data. Huh? It ain't came out of what you think. Huh? And then when you see this, you realize beating a child is not done in Africa. Hmm? What's this? Listen to this. Scientific data. Number one, punishment leads to shame. Oh, oh, oh. Punishment leads to shame. What gave you the right to punish a child? What gave you that right? Huh? Because it made you mad, but the child across the street that do it don't make you mad? But this one, you have the right to beat this one. What kind of fool is you? And all y'all think you do it the right time. I had a woman call me on the radio. Call me on the radio show and say, you can say what you want to say about beating. I'm glad for the whooping my mama gave me. Whatever school you're in, you should drop out the whooping the middle. <laughs> How old are you? Say, I'm 20. How long have you been in college? Well, as a story. So how long did she say? Twenty. I said, how long you been in college? So I just started. So where'd you live before you went there? I lived with my mama the whole time. Twenty years. So you multiply twenty. Just put twenty. Multiply by three. That's how many meals she gave you a day. Then multiply by three hundred sixty-five years. Then multiply that by twenty. That's how many meals she gave you. And all you can tell me, you happy for the whoopings? You ain't mentioned nothing about the food. Hmm? <laughs> Punishment leads to shame. Number two, shame leads to anger. Then to rage. And finally, violence. Uh oh, did y'all hear that? Yeah. Them little punks you got at home, you cut your eyes and you threaten them. Then five years later, you wonder why your ankle's swelling up? Why you feel all this pain? Hmm? Payback. Hmm? So y'all go ahead and do whatever you want to do. Them children didn't come from you, they came through you. Huh? And once you understand that, then you see things different. Go ahead. Finish. Number two, shaming is the assault on the soul. Uh oh, that's where the real God hang out. That's where the connector. And then you jumped in there and did that? Go ahead. 
When shaming reaches the inner core of the soul, it leads to violence. Uh -oh. Three, when shame is so overwhelming, the mind numbs itself and the individual. Did you hear that? Huh? Them little things that you mess around with like you would a rat or a roach. Huh? Go ahead. When shame is so overwhelming, the mind numbs itself and the individual. Cannot feel anything. That's what you got walking around your house. And don't you think these white scientists don't know what to put in the air? Huh? Chemtrails, which is lead and manganese, and once you get enough manganese, you'll kill your mama. Okay? You will kill your mama. No child of mine gonna act like that. I ain't never heard y'all say that about white folks. I ain't never heard y'all say about that cop that shot your son in the head 40 times and the other son came back from Vietnam to go to the funeral and go right back. Hmm? Hmm? That don't bother you? That don't bother you? Hmm? Because you are people that haven't been liberated. Thank you, brother. And boy, I learned about psychopath and sociopath. That's how we won the war. The war. Why? Because I had some brothers like y'all sitting around, like this nigga here. And you was a close friend to the president. Huh? What was his name? The black brother was always with him. Who? You say you didn't say Harry Potter. Eric Holder. Who? Eric Holder. I said, oh, I'm sorry was next to Abraham Lincoln. Frederick Douglass. And the brother walked up to Fred, he's over, you know, had a little light lunch with the president. He said, nigga, why don't you stop going there aggravating that fool? Hmm? You can't speak for our liberation. You don't know how. You know, the last time you took me in there, Abraham Lincoln told you how funny I was and how much stuff I was talking. Why don't you take me back? And he did. And because of that meeting, we sitting here free, not liberated. All the brother said to, to Abraham Lincoln, he said, hey, this nigga's a fool. Hmm? He know you the president, and he know you got an army. But ain't no in the world you gonna give a, a black Folks, the army. So I want to ask you, can we use the army? We won't give it back. Use it, that's all. We don't need you after that. But you got to throw in that sociopath and that psychopath. Grant and Sherman. Stone fools. Stone fools. And that's where them white boys love the military because they can take all their criminal sickness and lay behind that and get away with it. We didn't know till this year, after they investigated rapes in the military, and said 32,000 a year. This year it went up and said most of the people get raped in the army and the military. It's men. Oh. That's how it works. Somebody asked me, said, but how do you know, when did you learn there was gays in the military when I saw George Washington? <laughs> Them tight, silk pants, high heel shoes, makeup, mm, wigs on. Mm. <laughs> Somewhere. So, just leave here changed. Just leave here and just do different because whatever you're doing ain't working. Hmm? Anytime you fool enough to get up, now I can see you praying to the church, but you pray to God for a job, do you realize God owns the whole universe and all you want is a job? 
<laughs> Every time I pray to God, I say, hey, Tampa, I know, you, I know you're busy, but I sure wish you'd send me a little piece of that moon. I know that sells good. <laughs> hmm? Sell me a piece of the moon. No, man, let me hear some white boy singing Moon River. Hmm? Somewhere. That's all you have to do is stop waking up all evil. Everybody made you evil, but the folks downtown, the last time they saw you, you were smiling. Hmm? Then you're going to bring that home. Hmm? So again, my brother, I just say, you just, you just need to keep your eyes open. Keep your eyes open. Ben Laden was killed December 01 by Sheikh Amman. The same one that killed the Wall Street Journal reporter. Huh? Now, if they come back and get to talking, when they know it didn't happen, that's why they had to kill all of them. When you get home, you don't have to look deep. Just look at the five, five Navy SEALs that fell out of a helicopter. And the one that claimed he shot him in the head, the white boy's so cold. He got shot in the head training with some Navy SEAL. They accidentally shot him in the head. Hmm? It's a game. Hmm? When Putin said, them white boys in, at, the, at the marathon, said he tried to warn him, remember? Well, the President of the United States can't call nobody but the President. That's protocol. So when did he call him? Okay? Or did he call him? Oh, and they got two people talking. They shortcut the president's shit and he'd be talking to somebody that think it's the president. Hmm? Somewhere. So this is a game. And so y'all need to look at the news. Don't turn it off. Just look at the news and just say, I don't believe that. Ain't nobody gonna hear you but you. But the universal spirit's different because you just sent, I, I don't believe that. I, I believe they're lying. Hmm? Thousands of little punk children with no education can't read or write and can trick the mightiest army, the mightiest CIA in the history of the planet. You know why they can trick them? Because you can't trick them because you're scared of them. Huh? You don't know they scum and represent darkness. You don't know that you light and represent beauty. You can twist it around. Hmm? And all you got to do is when you see him coming, speak to him. Hey, how you doing? Hmm? That's all. Somewhere. And so, uh, General Pateas, y'all remember when he got busted? Yeah. Huh? What did they say he got busted about? Huh? So, just one time. Have an affair. Do you think anybody give a damn about a general getting some pussy? Huh? Have you ever heard of a general getting out the army and do something humane? It wasn't about that. General Petraeus was getting ready to overthrow this government. Who said that? Yeah, overthrow the government and who you think he was gonna kill? No, see that's right, y'all so messed up. He gonna kill Romney a week before the election. So they ain't got time to have a convention so they would have picked him. But somebody stopped it. And had they not, we wouldn't be here now. I'm not talking about them, white folk wouldn't be here now. That's what them thugs was fixing to pull on. Hmm? That's what they're getting ready to pull on. And they ain't stopped. Hmm? Only thing I'm mad about Obama about, he ain't black enough. And I tell white folks, okay, you don't like the nigga, okay, but at least like the white side of him. His mama was white. <laughs> and to you black folks, especially you women, let Obama be your example. He did everything white folk told him to do. He had a white mother there to enforce it. Went to their best schools. Hmm? Studied under their powerful professors. 
And they treat that boy like he a third grade dropout on death row. And since y'all like education, why don't y'all march down there with a picture of him and say, he's just like you. Hmm? And then the Supreme Court did that. Of course, you ain't going to do nothing. The woman said, well, how, how will I get the message out? If Dick Gregory got caught tonight in bed with a little bitty boy, y'all would get that message all the way around the world. You wouldn't have to wait on New York Times. What is it about filth? You can handle it. But something nice that's about liberation, you can't handle it. Huh? Huh? Christmas. Just call the folks. You have to wait on Al Sharpton and NAACP. They doing what they want to do. Why are you going to come to a vegetarian's house and expect to eat pork? Huh? <laughs> Leave him alone. He's happy with it. They're happy with it. Huh? I used to tell them, tell them about, uh, 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 I ain't going to let Whitey hit me, man. I'm not telling you let him hit him. I'm not going to knock a pork chop out your hand. Don't knock a gun out of mine. And if I want to do it this way, that ain't you dying. That's me. Huh? And we won. Went up against the mightiest army in the history of the planet with no guns. Number one, he do it every day. Now, you be scared now. See his coat wet, sweating. You can say, say, I wonder if they're going to get upset what they're hearing here tonight. Hmm? But I love you, man. Love you, the family. And so let me just show you this and we're going to get out of here. This is all the documents we were able to get out the king stuff. All of them. And ain't nothing they can do about it. Nothing they can do about it. Put me in jail. I said, put me right next to your mama, boy. What did you say? You heard me. Put me right next to your mama. Hmm? What do you think she's doing at home all day? Just her and the butler. <laughs> Had so much fun they did a movie called The Butler. <laughs> and those of y'all, because a lot of, lot, of, lot of West Indies in here, so I know y'all looking at the soccer, right? None of you? None of y'all turned in the World Cup? No. That might be some salvation for y'all. But for those that you all that did, you know damn good and well, the Germans can't beat them that bad. That's white supremacy. That's white supremacy. Huh? Y'all just think, well, any given time, they, you serious? That's why Michael Jordan had to kill his daddy. Watch his daddy kill. They caught him shaving points. Hmm? Huh? That's what that old thug boy out there in California, he owns the, what was that old guy? Come on, the basketball team, yeah? Sterling. 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 Y'all look at that and don't know that's a gay thing? But y'all want to make somebody think y'all know so much. Didn't you hear the sister say, I've been with him three years, he ain't never asked for no sex? Right. <laughs> so why is he mad at the black player? Hmm? Oh, is that a love thing? Hmm? I love you hear? So y'all need to just look at the game and leave it alone. Huh? Do I what? Another slate. Oh, me no, yeah, but that that sounds cute. The nigga still doing it. If you had a son that good, he, that nigga be playing too. <laughs> he be out there getting you all car tickets, <laughs> taking you to some of them free parties. You go too long, you leave your mom at home. <laughs> That's what the game is about. Super, super rich 
Billionaires don't play that bullshit. Huh? They send their sons. Well, those are free parties. Hmm? Those are games. A guy can be on the other side of half court, the whistle ring, and that ball go in. Y'all seen that, haven't you? Oh, he'll be right under it, and, and the ball don't go in. Is it something in that ring that they magnetically control it and make it do what they want it to do? Hmm? Is it something out there when they playing golf? Is it something magnetically that the owners don't know about it? Hmm? And you know that game that, that, that Germany won another day? Trillions of dollars changed hands. Hmm? Changed hands. That's a game. It's a sport to you, but it's a game. So somewhere, I think I put it up here. I hope I did. And we're going to get out of here. And uh, no, no, I'm going to find some vegetarian rum. <laughs> Sometime y'all come around early and take the brother to dinner. Hmm? See, every now and then you have to do something for folks they can't steal. When I bring you by my house for dinner, you can't steal that. Rockefeller with all his trillions can't come by my house. Now he'll probably burn it down, but I'll be at his house. Somewhere. Here's what's wrong with your neighborhood, and y'all need to stop calling it a community. A community would hug him. Community, you control your schools, your crime, your cops, your banks, and everything. Huh? So you live in a hood, and a hood is something you put over your head when you're trying to hide something. Hmm? Listen to this. Crime linked to pollution. Linked to pollution. Polluted water can cause brain damage that turns ordinary people into violent criminals. Uh -oh. what? What? Huh? A researcher says, Roger Masters of Darman College in Hanover, NH, compared crime figures from the FBI with information on industrial discharges of lead and manganese. Lead and manganese, chemtrails. Yeah. Every night they drop it down. Huh? And you won't blame it on him. Uh, can't trust him, huh? And the people who you think you can trust is the one that's dropping it, huh? Somewhere. He found a link between pollution levels and murder, assault, and robbery. Counties with the highest pollution levels Hello. had... Go back and do that again now. Counties with what? Counties with the highest pollution levels had crime rates triple the U.S. average. That's it? Finish. Booker T. Washington. <laughs> Them white folks tricked Booker T. to come up here. And white boys jumped on him and beat him up. And they never had told the truth. When the doctors came back and carried him down the back to Tuskegee, he died there. Killed by a white man. That's who he was protecting. We don't want your job. We just want to be blacksmith. Let's speak for yourself, man. That's what this is about. And I was looking for the other paper where the New York Times ran the, the biography on him. When he died, what's that headline say there? White man assaults Booker Washington. Tell you what it said, and y'all can look it up. Pull up New York Times obituary about Booker T. Washington. Now, this is just announcing the beating. On the autopsy, on the, on the murder, here's what the New York Times said. It goes through and tell you what a great 
educated he was in page two, say he started out just as a little nigger boy. That's New York Times. Hmm? They don't care in no shape, form, or fashion. And so, some of y'all probably know this, and if you don't, if they ever put up a reward for that damn plane from Malaysia, this is where it is. Call me and I'll tell you right where to go to get the money. Was Malaysia Airlines Flight 370 redirected to Diego Garcia? Ocean. Yeah. Then you got to figure out before that happened, something was coming. When them little Africans was pirating them ships, jumping on the biggest navy in the history of the planet, and that little country there ain't got five canoes. Hmm? One of them ships they stole had a hundred million gallons of oil on it. Now, if you gave it to them, they wouldn't know where to sell it. They were setting that up so nobody would see all them ships out there for a year and a half. That's right next door to the Garcia. And nobody knew they was building a runway because that plane couldn't land there. Diego Garcia is named after a Spanish king, been dead 2,000 years. The British own it now, but they leased it to America, and we do stuff there that would make Hitler blush. And why was it? There, 20 scientists, how many of y'all knew about that? 20 scientists was on that plane. Four of them had filed for patents worth $400 billion. So if one, two, three, four filed for patents, and I'm the fifth one, but you all was on that plane, the patent wasn't cleared till three days after the plane is missing, so y'all won't get nothing. I get it. Who was the fifth person? Huh? The Carlisle Group, that's Bush and them. So y'all be up all morning looking to see. I remember one time I was on a TWA when the 747 first came out, and I'm sleeping, this white guy hit me. And, and uh, excuse me, excuse me, sir. Uh, plane looked like it was going to turn over. Now, he didn't talk to me long, wasn't nothing wrong. He was just drinking a little whiskey. When that plane made that hip, he threw that whiskey down and pulled out his rosary. <laughs> I said, Well, you don't need to show me the rosary. My Baptist minister, Reverend Gully, take care of my stuff. Somewhere. So he said, well, why'd you look in the back? The plane was full. You got family back? No, I was looking to see how many white folks were on the plane. And all of them on the plane was white but me. And I went back to sleep. I said, yeah, those are good odds. <laughs> and I got some friends to make everybody in the world believe I had something to do with it. This is the one in Washington, D.C., the Naval Yard. The name of y'all, remember? Yeah. Monday morning. Hmm? Y'all remember that Monday morning we woke up, 8.20? They went in there. What is that? That's the newspaper. The Daily Courier. Daily, that's Canada. What's that say there? Police FBI shooter reported in military building at Washington Navy Yard, multiple victims. Now, put that story out. Eric Tucker and Brett Zangia. The Associated Press. The Associated Press. Huh? Now, where'd you stop up here? Several people were injured in a shooting Monday morning at a building at the Washington Navy Yard. Wait, wait. Go up here. Listen to this now. A defining official who spoke to the Associated Press on the condition of the autonomy because he was not authorized to speak during an active attack. Sunday the 15th. Wait, wait, listen, listen, listen. What did it say? Sunday the 15th, September 2013. 2331 hours. They accidentally sent the story out. 
at midnight the night before it happened. Hmm. Okay. Midnight. Go ahead. They got the date there. What's the, what's the date there? Sunday the 15th, September 2013. <laughs> I just thought it didn't, it didn't happen until Monday, which means it didn't happen at all. Hmm. Y'all leave here and know that you different. Hmm? You different. Chicago, if one of y'all can pull up and get the Chicago magazine. Hmm? You got the date on that? Just uh, maybe four weeks ago. Published April the 7th, 2014 at 9.36 a.m. And what's the headline say? The truth about Chicago's crime rates. What they broke in this magazine was saying the Chicago police and the mayor is lying. The reason they said it went down, they would take people with five or six bullets in them and said die from natural causes. And all you got to do is put it together and know that is organs. Organs. And if the cop come to your house and say your son was killed by a drive-by shooting, the first thing you need to ask yourself, anybody that petty and ungodly and unspeakable will just shoot black folks walking down the street, but they don't shoot black women. Where that ethics come from? Because men's organs sell for more than women's organs. And when they come home, you have your little funeral, and once you bury them, it's too late. You need to have a doctor or have somebody. That's why you got to have a group to cut them back open. Yeah. And make sure, because if you just look at the wounds there, you think that was part of the investigation. Right. Hmm? Part of it. And the minute you hear that shot, you need to go and bump at the corner. Because you don't have jurisdiction over homicide. But you can make yourself present, okay? So somewhere, I ran for president in 68. Let me tell you what they do, including Obama did it to him. What's the, what's the date on that? Wall Street Journal, 1923. 23. Current file, no. Did you go to special school? <laughs> Current file, November the 7th, 1968. <laughs> you do know him, right? They didn't switch on you tonight on the way here. I ran for the presidency that Tuesday. This story ran that Friday. What paper was it? Wall Street Journal. Wall Street Journal. Hear me. One of the most powerful papers in the world. Now, what's it say? Keep reading. What's it say? Election computer, goofs, gives Gregory nine million votes. No, 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 no. Hear this. At midnight, they shut all the computers down because it's already projected Gregory as the next president of the United <laughs> States. Huh? Now, the question you have to ask how come the Wall Street Journal ran this and no other paper? Hmm? They went into Pennsylvania and hooked it up for Nixon. And whoever did it made a mistake and hooked it around my number. <laughs> and so an hour after the polls closed, it spit out Dick Gregory won Pennsylvania by nine million. And once you win by that, there's a trend and then the machine shuts down. They've already decided. Okay? That's how they play it. That's how it works. Okay? So we can get another Negro president. Okay? You don't know this machine. The same way they did it there. They'll do it again. Hmm? Somewhere. So thank you, my brother. Thank you. And so as we leave you... As we leave you, I want you to hear this. 
They've been spying on King's family. We got the documents. The Army Intelligence sent out Sixty-five sniper teams, because they had his schedule where he was going to speak for the next 35 days. And they would take him out any one of those spots. And one of the sad things about it, a white woman, honky-tonk, no teeth, living in a flop house most of her life. And when the gun was fired, y'all remember that picture? The folks on the balcony pointing. Better get a good look at that picture and see who that was, because it was told to point the wrong way. Bullet came from the ground. Hmm? From the ground. But forget that. If a gun went off here, wouldn't we hit the floor? And how do we know there's not going to be another shot? So what was they doing? Huh? See, one day when y'all get rid of all that bullshit yeah. huh? and talk about the real universe, it's right there for you. Right there for you. Hmm? Right there. And so that's what King had to go through. How many of y'all heard of uh, Jack Ruby? Yeah. Hmm. What, what did he do? Nightclub owner? Kill him. Here's, here's a document we got. Lee Harvey Oswald killed by Jack Ruby, a secret document released from the House on American Activity about Jack Ruby. In this sworn testimony, that one Jack Ruby be called to testify, be not, be not called to testify, signed on the second day of December, 1947. That's how long Jack Ruby been a government agent. Huh? Huh? So y'all just sit here and eat your little sweet potato pie. Hmm? Hmm? And when you die, wherever you go, whoever's in charge, they ain't gonna ask you a damn thing about no sweet potato pie. Hmm? And so can you imagine King followed all his life because a handful of powerful people knew who he is and know who you are, but you ain't doing nothing. Huh? Can you imagine they had to recruit black folks to sit in all his college classes? They went to school with him every day and then reported back. Hmm? And y'all sitting wondering, what's wrong with the King family? Them niggas crazy. You'd be crazy too. If you was four years old and the phone ring and your mom and dad pick you up and you see a look on their face you ain't never seen before, somebody just said, we're going to blow your damn house up, nigga, and kill all y'all, and you can't run outside, right. and you can't call the police because everyone that made the phone call. Right. You take your little grandchildren and go through that change, and then maybe you'll know what's wrong with the kings, okay? Yeah. You damn soldiers you send to war, they got a whole country behind them, and they come back home just as crazy and bad as hell, and they got, they got thousands of people helping him. King was out there by himself. And if you wanted to show up, you could, but he had no guarantee. And that's why we was always there. Huh? Always there. That brother took on the mightiest military in the world. Here he is right here. Right here. And so... And so, let me say thanks. Anybody want some pictures or something? I'll be out. Well, he'll tell what we. This is last time. I'm gonna show you how they do it. What paper is that? On the side. Okay, uh, what's the date? Sunday, May 10, 1992. Headlines. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. The New York Times International, Sunday, May the 10th, 1992. 
Los Angeles police differ sharply with prosecutors on arrest totals. Now, this is the police and the prosecutors. You got that? Now, go back. What's it say? Los Angeles police differ sharply with prosecutors on arrest totals. Go ahead. Los Angeles, May the 9th, reflecting confusion that has characterized the city response to the violence that spoke out 10 days ago. Now listen to how many they really arrested. Go ahead. Prosecutors, police are given wildly different amounts of the number of riot-related arrests. Police officials said today that they had arrested 18,000 people from Wednesday night, April the 29th. Did you hear that, 18,000? Okay. The day the riots began due this morning, but prosecutors say they could not account for as many as 10,000 of those people. Those organs! While y'all sitting looking at you, they tell you niggas is riding? It never happened. Huh? And when they run that picture again where he was getting beat out down the road, Look, you see, that's been lighted just like they do with a Hollywood film. Huh? And y'all sit and go for all that. You don't trust the white man, you don't trust the white man, but take everything else that you're going to put in your head and trust that. Hmm? 10,000 people. Huh? Way back then. Then he went to court. How much did he win? Three million. And he shared it with the jeweler. The sister on the court, that was a jeweler. You know she was sent there. And then when his book came out, that's when he got killed. This is your America. Huh? You ain't going nowhere. Hmm? You ain't going nowhere because you can't find a nigga with a canoe that can make it back to Africa. And once you get back there, they made nothing but CIA, British intelligence, nigga. Right. All the places in Africa that don't have no natural resources, ain't no fighting. Right. Huh? Right. Ain't no fighting. And so somewhere, it's simple. When you go home tonight and for the next month, put this brother in your meditation. That's, right. huh? That's the power you have. That's the power you have. You don't have to get permission from white folks. It might be a priest looking at your little grandson. Hmm? That's who you are. And so just meditate on this brother in the movement. And then you see what happened. Because hmm? some awful stuff is fixing to come down. What was it in the Bible? Don't hide from me, Christian. When God told the Jews to put what on the door? And what would happen? He'd pass over. What God that put the whole universe don't know where a Jew lives? Why you got the market, nigga? Huh? I'm the universal God. Huh? I know where I know where every ant is. I know how many grains of sand, but I got to have you mark a door so I don't kill you. Ooh. Ooh. What I gotta do is unwind it. What I gotta do is unwind it. I can go all the way around the world, and I can recognize a hoe just by her demeanor. The way she walks, the way she talks, the way she winks. But if you don't tell me you're a Christian, I don't know you one, but I know a hoe from her demeanor. Hmm? Hmm? So all you got to do is just unwind it and stop being afraid. Hmm? The same universal God that put him put you here. Hmm? And then it came back and gave you somebody to look at to see how I want it done. Hmm? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And here's a good example of education and no liberation. One of the smart, bright minds on the planet. We don't care about you. Because most of the people you be dealing with is not liberated. Hmm? And non-liberated people always think the same way. They mad because something happened. Hmm? Mad. So again, I'm always happy to, to be here with you. And just hug my brother with yes, witnesses. Sir. Yes, sir. With witnesses. Yes, sir. And you don't have to worry about when they frame him. If you go 30 
30 days in a meditation and put that seal around him. Can't nobody hurt him. Can't nobody touch him. That's your job. The police, the FBI, the government is slime and darkness. He need light. And I can see your light from standing up here. Hmm? See it now. I'm not going to ask you to pray for me because I, I, I usually ask for prayer when that lottery number get up to 600 million. <laughs> I ain't going to lie to you. My mama told me you weren't supposed to pray when you're gambling, but I said, God, what do my mama know? <laughs> She know how to cook greens with pork. Hmm? What does she know? Hmm? My poor mama, when the white boys took over me, I became the fastest modeler in the world. But I didn't get credit because I had to all Negro meat. So white folk went crazy. You know, my mama didn't know that was me. All she knew me about was Richard. Then white folk was talking about Dick Gregory. <laughs> Told me, said, I did something awful the other day. I heard this white man talking about a Dick Gregory, and I made like for a few minutes, that was my son, I didn't help him. <laughs> I said, I know him, you want me to tell him something for you? Forget that, hmm? forget that. Walk out of here and know that arthritis leg is gonna stop hurting. Hmm? Yeah. Know that, yeah. it's that simple. Hmm? They got stuff out here now that's so incredible, you know what they did to me since I, last time I was on you? The doctor called me in and said, I, 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 I gave you this brain scan, but 56 years ago, you had a mini stroke. And they can pick that up. Hmm? And so you didn't know it? I said, no, I didn't. Well, I was drinking a whole lot of whiskey there. Then. I had stroke as long as I didn't drop that bottle. <laughs> Take care. Don't holler about it's hot. Just drink water, room temperature. Go get you some celery. Celery. Okay? When you open up your refrigerator, what makes that cool? What makes that cool is the same thing that's in celery. Sodium. It will lower your blood temperature, your body temperature, 10 to 15 degrees. Just that simple. Just that simple. And so y'all bless the brother and the, the people up here that doing the things. And uh, <clears throat> when you get around to blessing me, wait till the lottery. <laughs> I ain't got no preference. Powerball, you know, or the other one. Hmm? And you can, you can vouch for God for me. God, he said, you know his heart. You know, if I get it, I'm going to do the right thing with it. Right here first. Yes, sir. Now, I got a little problem with this other one. And I tell God, I say, God, I know I win that big one. I've been married to this black woman for 55 years. I think I'm going to do right by her. But I ain't never had 600 million at one time. You see things different. You know what I mean? I walk in the house with that check. Say, Leo, what's wrong with your neck? Nigga, I've had this hump in my back ever since we've been met. I didn't see it until I got the check. I love you. I love you.